Hi, this is Mike and Rick at Advantage Screen Printing, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about what's involved in the process of making screens, getting um, jobs ready to be screen printed, and all that's involved. Cool. The technical stuff. <laughs> today I thought we'd focus a little bit on terminology that we use for screen printing, and uh, one of the things is screen color, or uh, uh, amount of colors that you're going to print on a shirt. Here is an example of a single color. And here is an example of a six color. And this one is an example of, I think it was five or six color simulated process. I'm going to explain a little bit of this. This and this are both spot colors, solid areas of just a single color. There's no mixing. And as you saw in the first video where I was printing this and flashing between the colors, so there's no mixing or blending. It's just all solid colors. This one is comprised of very tiny dots, very similar to um, process printing like you would see in the old newspapers or magazines, where you have colors and you vary the tone by the quantity of dots laying down the color. You have to use very high mesh screens for this <clears throat> to get these subtle variations in the tones, in the colors. These are all just different colors blending in different uh, relations to each other to get all that uh, spectrum of color. <clears throat> okay, so spot color. Currently we can do six colors at a time because that's um, our press. So I thought I would show you kind of a step-by-step -step process. This is um, a folder for a job that we're going to be doing, and it is a six color. And this <clears throat> is uh, our separations. It's printed on a clear transparency, solid black ink, and the reason for that is because our screens are coated with a photosensitive substance, an emulsion, and it dries and then we expose it and we'll get into that part later. And here's, um, here's the white for the underbase and since this design is going to be going on at least black and probably a, uh, a variety of other colors, I like to have a white to make the colors really stand out and it helps unify all the colors. That meaning um, when you print your design on a wide variety of colors, they're all, the colors are always going to look the same because they're going on white plastisol as a base. And so, as you can see here, here's all the different films. Should I hold on? I actually see a little better on the ground. Okay. And as you can see, there's little targets, crosshairs that we use to uh, register the art onto screen and then screens onto the press. You get all the targets there? Yeah. Okay, so now we'll go into the dark room and we'll show you the next phase. Okay, so now here we are in one of the most secret... Don't show them that! <laughs> one of the most secret locations in the entire facility. This is the dark room where we keep our screens in this nice safe yellow light because as I said earlier they're coated with a photosensitive emulsion and that means if they were to see regular UV heavy light they would harden and we wouldn't be able to use them. So they stay in here where it's nice and dark, <clears throat> relatively speaking. And so now what I'm going to do is we've got to get our image onto our screens. So I always start uh, with the underbase. If I'm doing a design that has an underbase, I just set it up on my handy dandy thingamajiggy here. See if you can keep up with the technical lingo. Alright, so we got our white brown. Okay. Let's see what I'm 
centered, you'll see the targets are on line with a line there. And as, as you can see on the bottom of the film, I have the color. This one's going to be blue. So we'll just go ahead and do the blue screen. And the white stays down taped to this thing while I lay up all the other colors. That way all the colors will be lined up to each other. So I get these targets lined up and I tape down the next color. I know it's all horribly exciting. all this stuff. So that goes there. And so I put this tape down, sticky side up, and I attach it to the outer edge of the color that I'm lining up. Let's see. That's blue. We can go. It's either... Oh, we got one of these. So that's a... This is a 255 <clears throat> mesh. And I should probably explain a little bit about the mesh count at this point. <clears throat> so the numbers, when it comes to mesh, refer to how many um, openings there are in the surface in a square centimeter. So this screen is a 255. So that means for every square centimeter, there's 255 openings in the mesh. So obviously that kind of quantity in the same space are going to be smaller holes. That limits how much ink you're setting down and also helps you with um, high uh, detail. detail prints. But for this design we're just concerned about getting um, the colors that go over the white don't need to uh, we don't need to lay down a huge layer of ink, so that's why I'm going with the higher mesh on those. All right, I think that's it for this stage. I'm not gonna do all of them. Yeah. No. So, uh, I've got a couple of screens taped up with the uh, transparencies on them, and this is our exposure unit. And what it does is it's going to apply a lot of uh, bright uh, UV light to harden and expose that emulsion. And on the films, every part that was black is going to block the light and not allow it to harden. So then um, once this part is done, we take them over there and uh, rinse out all of the emulsion that hasn't hardened, and that's how we get our stencil. Back in suck down, start it up. And then I'll just take a few minutes and take them off and wash them up. Yeah. Oh, what? Powerful. <laughs> yeah. So what's it doing now? It is exposing um, and hardening the mesh, or the emulsion on the mesh. And uh, once it's done that, then uh, we rinse it out. Okay. Well, in the parts where the like the black ink yeah, was on the light, yeah, and uh, keeps that part of the emulsion from hardening cool. and exposing. That way, we just rinse it out with water. And that's how we end up with our stencil.
So what was that? Oh, uh -huh. oh that's a, that is a screen after it's been washed out. All the, uh, the parts of the emulsion that did not expose. Let's see the, where the clear part of the film was. That hardened. Here on the film was all uh, the black ink which blocked the light. And we were able to rinse that out. And now we have our stencil. Set it up there to kind of dry it out. Sometimes there's a lot of moving around in this shop. Two screens down, four to go. Oh yeah. So with the six color design, obviously we have to do this six times. Streams. <clears throat> so yeah. it's all part of the wonderful process. Yep. And then the next step is uh, waiting. Yes. While the other ones are other four screens are being exposed. So yep. Okay, so to be continued after six screens are exposed. So after the screen has been exposed and dried, we tape off all the uh, areas where the emulsion doesn't cover, like around the edges here. You can see the emulsion only goes to there, so we have this gap. So we tape over that to make sure that uh, ink doesn't slide through and get all over your shirt to make a big mess. But now, this, as you can see, this screen has three different images on it. And we're going to print this one first, so I'm going to tape over the other. It doesn't get through those while I'm printing. Now we have our screen with tape blocked out, ready to go. Set it up on the machine. But this one is a unique situation. I've printed a job with six colors, and we're having to change the underbase. So I'm going to have to line this new screen up to the existing black. So. Questions? Yes. So that's the life of a screen, though, huh? It goes from printout to darkroom to... Yeah, of course we've skipped the stripping where we remove the emulsion and the uh, coating. So we've skipped all that. But yeah, this is pretty much the life of a screen from sitting in the darkroom, getting the art output on the screen, exposed, Take that block out and on the press. Cool. Ready to print. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Stay tuned.